So we are now in lesson 8, which is all about the electrolytic cells. Our objective for this lesson is that at the end, we will be able to describe the process of electrolysis, know the operation of electrolytic cells, and be able to perform stoichiometry calculations for electrolytic cells. In the previous lessons, we talked about electrochemical cells in which spontaneous redox reactions take place. So we have learned that these electrochemical cells wherein redox, spontaneous redox reactions take place are called the galvanic or the voltaic cells. And we also have learned that in these cells, electrical work is done by a spontaneous redox reaction system on its surroundings as electrons are produced by the reaction by the redox reaction are transferred through an external circuit. So the flow of electrons or the reason why um, electrical work is done. In galvanic cells, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. So from chemical to electrical. Because of the spontaneous redox reaction, electrical energy is produced. Now in this lesson, we will discuss about the other type of electrochemical cell wherein electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. So balik tad siya. Chemical sa voltaic, chemical to electrical. But in this type of cell, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. And this type of cell is the electrolytic cell. So sa, sa galvanic cell, spontaneous and redox reaction in the electrolytic cell, it is a non-spontaneous redox reaction. So in this cell, a non-spontaneous redox reaction takes place because of electrical work done by an external source. Kaya di ba, ang non-spontaneous nga reaction kay kinahanglan siya o external intervention para mo happen ang reaction. And the external intervention that we, will, we are talking about here is now um, the external source. So unsa ni siyang external source? Okay, so this is... Um, the components of the of the electrolytic cell, so unsay components a electrolytic cell, so it's composed of the voltage source, so muni siyang external source, which is the battery, connected by wires to two electrodes dipped in, in an electrolyte. So same with um same with the galvanic cell, ang electrolytic cell kay napud siya duha ka electrodes. So the battery so, this is the first component. The battery pulls the electrons from the anode. So, take note, it pulls. See ang reason nga numuflo ang electron. Iyang birahon ang electrons from the anode, making it positively charged, and pushes it to the cathode, making it negatively charged. So, this time, kung sa, kung sa galvanic cell, ang anode is negatively charged, And then the cathode is positively charged. Sa voltaic, ah, sa voltaic. Sa electrolytic cell, the anode is now, so naman siya, positively charged. And the cathode is now negatively charged. Balik tad. So, the two electrodes is dipped in an electrolyte. So, unlike in the voltaic cell wherein they are dipped into two different electrolytes, in an electrolytic cell, they, the two electrodes are dipped in the same electrolyte. And this electrolyte is either molten or dissolved in a suitable solvent wherein um, most of the time the solvent is water. So, it's either molten or dissolved in a suitable solvent. And take note that this is an electrolyte. Okay, so this is how an electrolytic cell looks like. So, we have the battery here. And then, same with the voltaic cell. So, we have the wire connected. And then, diba, ang nakalihi nila kay isa na lang ka, isa na lang ka electrolyte, tapos wala na voltmeter kasi syempre ang voltmeter sa voltaic cell kay momento siya mo read sa sa voltage nga ma-generate so instead of the voltmeter we have here the battery which is the reason why mo flow ang electrons diba 
So we have the battery and then we have the two wires leading to the still. So we have the anode and the cathode and then we have the electrolyte solution here. So the battery provides a source of direct electric current and the two wires lead to the two electrodes from the terminals of the battery. And then we have the two electrodes dipped in a solution containing ions. So we have the cation and the anion. So M and X here represent any um, element. So ions. So what are the com so unsa mechanism sa unsa flow sa electrons in the in the electrolytic cell? So the battery acts as an electron pump. So what it does is that it pushes electrons into the cathode. So ang iyang gibuhat, iyang i-remove, di ba? Sa as, as stated ganiha, it's going to pull or remove the electrons from the anode, making it positively charged, and it will push that electron into the cathode, making it negatively charged. So anode is positive, cathode is negative. When the electrons transfer, the electrons become the, the electrodes become charged. As previously stated, the anode becomes positively charged and the cathode becomes negatively charged. But, just like in the voltaic cell, kinahanglan di ba ma-maintain ang electrical neutrality. So, the anions in the electrolyte will go to the positively charged anode to give up electrons undergo oxidation to produce a neutral substance. On the other hand, the cations in the electrolyte will go to the negatively charged cathode to receive electrons, undergo reduction to produce a neutral substance. So there will always be neutral substances um, produced when oxidation and reduction takes place. So here, so, di ba, ang electrons are liberated kay gibira at the anode, gibira siya sa battery, and it's consumed at the cathode, kay dito man siya. Okay, so, ang, ang anode, unsa na to siya, nahimo na siyang positively charged, and ang cathode, nahimo na siyang negatively charged, so, dili man siya pwede charged. That is why, para man neutral, so, positively charged man siya. So, ang anions, kay moad to sa anode para mo neutralize. Mawala ang charge. Ba? Kay negative o positive. Also, ang cation, moad to sa cathode. Kay positively charged man ang cation. Niya, negative ang cathode. So, para mo balance siya sa charge, para ma-maintain ang electrical neutrality. So, moad to siya sa negatively charged cathode. And in both electrons electrodes um, neutral substances are produced the process taking place katong process can it take place in an electrolytic cell wherein electric electricity is used to pass through an electrolyte causing the separation of materials is called electrolysis so it is defined as the passage of direct current through an ionic substance that is either so kaning ionic substance diba mo ni siyang electrolyte so, as stated ganiha, it's either molten or dissolved in a suitable solvent and the results are chemical reactions at the electrodes and separation of materials. So, unsa may separate ng material ato? Katong naa sa electrolyte. So, an electrolytic cell, as stated, ganiha na pod, is an electrochemical cell wherein a non-spontaneous redox reaction is made to occur by pumping electrical energy into the system, which is done by this battery. Ionic compounds are chemical compounds composed of a cation and an anion, just to define kung unsa ni siya, held together by electrostatic forces called ionic bonding. So, na ay cation o anion. An electrolyte is a substance that acquires the capacity to conduct electricity when it is either molten or dissolved in water as it dissociates into ions. So, take note, all ionic compounds are strong electrolytes. An electrolyte must be molten or in a solution so that the current is carried through the electrolyte by movement of ions. In solids, it can't move. So, panang class N... A C L. 
So that's an ionic compound. Pero di ba, an ACL, say for example, it's sodium chloride. Um, yeah, it's sodium chloride. It's solid in form. So, dili man na siya ka, ka move ang electrons kay. Of course, it's solid man. So, kinahanglan siya, it's either i-melt siya or i-dissolve siya. Let's say, for example, water para mo flow ang electrons, para mo move ang ions. Kay, inig-melt niya, di ba, mo, kuhan mo siya ions Na plus and Cl, negative nga ions, mo move na ang ions. Solids, they cannot move. So, they have to be molten again or dissolved in a suitable solvent.